Hello everyone, this is uh, Eric Arahi speaking from Geotic. Uh, welcome to this webinar from a series of about 10 webinars about Geotic Log mostly. Uh, we're going through different points about different topics, uh, more specific topics. So today's topics is about um, certificate, QAQC, uh, how to manage assays and things like this. Um, so there will be two um, uh, two webinars, two separate webinars about analysis and, you know, just assays because there's quite a bit uh, to talk about in Jetic Log and we don't want to, those webinars to be too long. Uh, so before I start, uh, I'm just going to present uh, Geotic. So Geotic was created in 2002 by geologists and, and the idea was to actually improve uh, how databases were managed. Um, so it was created in 2002, like I mentioned, and there was a lot of um, regulations going on, and and a lot of people were still logging on papers or an Excel spreadsheet with no validations and things like this. So, so the goal of Geotic was to uh, improve the quality of information that um, the projects were gathering. All right, so let's. Um, Let's start this webinar. Okay, so first of all, okay, so today is about uh, assays, certificates, QAQC, uh, how to set up um, Jetic to be able to uh, to do uh, to manage your assays, basically. So, so let's start. Um, I, I, before I even going to Jetic log, I just want to show you just a quick assay certificate. Um, so, okay, so this is kind of a typical. As a certificate you would get, this is a fake lab, these are fake results, so don't worry. Um, so normally you do get a certificate in this kind of format, and you may have different types of analysis for uh, on the same certificate. Okay, so in this one we do have fire assays and gravimetric assays, which are calculated in two different units. Okay, so I'll show you how to do the conversions as well as you import everything into Geotic. Okay. Okay, another thing that we do see on a normal assay certificate is you do get those values, like bigger than something, smaller than something, sometimes you get letters, sometimes it's minus something. Anyway, these are not positive numbers and they are treated as text in even in Excel or CSV. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is actually set up Geotic to accept those numbers. Okay, so if I open Geotic now and I have a look at those allowed codes. Okay, so here we go. Um, so for example, if when I was looking at it, there was like a, a bigger than 10,000. So in this case, I don't have it in Geotic log. So we're just going to add this code in this case. So this is over detection limit. And this is bigger than 10,000. Make sure that you're writing it exactly the same way. Make sure that you don't put a space if there's none and so on, okay? And what does it correspond to? So maybe you want to go and say, okay, when it's bigger than 10,000, replace it by 10,000, okay? So this is the value for which you will be replacing the value. So, um, so you can do this, okay? So save. Also, there was another code saying, okay, smaller than five. Let's have a look at Jetic log. Uh, smaller than five, okay, this, this is where you have to be careful because this is smaller than space five. Well, mine has no space, just like this one, okay? So when it's a uh, detection limit, most of the time we just use half of the uh, detection limit okay so so that's what we've done in this case okay so we've put it 2.5 okay so you'll see later on you don't have to use those values necessarily and you don't want to be changing your certificate for other values so you want to keep your certificate clean just like you received it from the lab okay Jetic is going to be changing them if you want to later on okay so yeah okay so if I do this, it will recalculate my average composites. We'll, we'll talk about um, average composites a little bit later, okay? 
Okay, the next step you need to do is go to asset title. So as you know, in the newer version of Jetsic Log, you can create personalized tables that can allow sampling. So, um, so, you, so that's what I've done. I've created a personalized table, uh, which, ha which is called webinar, which is a sampling. Uh, if I go in here, so I've prohibited overlaps and I said there would be some samples and QAQC and average composites. Okay, so you can create your own personalized table with samples in them nowadays. Okay, so it was not possible before and a lot of people had problem with historical assays. They didn't know where to put them and so on. So now you can put them in a separate table if you want to. All right, so once you have this, okay, I'm just gonna delete everything from this table first uh, just to show you how it works, okay? So normally you can go from here, from the personalized table tab, but if you're just using your normal assay, you will have to go through sampling into the uh, dictionary, uh, sampling assay titles, okay? And in here, you have to choose your sampling table, okay? So my webinar table that I just created is also here. You have your assays that comes with Geotic, geochemistry that comes with Geotic as well. Uh, but these are all sampling tables that I've created over, the, over time, okay? So webinar. So my webinar by default, because when I created, created it, I said I wanted description column, so that's why there's description here, okay? Um, so you want to be able to add new columns to that table. And these columns will correspond probably most likely to your results that you're getting from your certificate. Okay, so I'm gonna add a new column. So you have different types of columns. So if you follow the webinar about the personalized tables and personalized columns, um, you'll recognize all of these. Uh, so results, okay, and what is the element? So I'm gonna have a look at my certificate. So this one is AUAAS for fire assay, okay? So I'm just gonna go into Jetsic Log and just write AUAAS. And it asks me for the units. So if I'm going back quickly, it's in PPB. Okay, so I'm just gonna write these are PPBs. All right, so this is two decimal places, so that's good. Composite calculation weighted on length, that's good. If you have a color code already made, so mine is called NCSS, uh, so I'm gonna use it. And the text color is either the text or the background is gonna be, be colored uh, according to the value of this column. So I'm gonna leave it as text for now, okay? I'm gonna do save. Now, there's a second column here in my certificates. It's the, the AU gravimetric. So I'm just gonna add another column and just call it AU grav. And in this one, in this case, is in gram tons, if I'm right. Yeah, gram tons. Okay, so I'm just gonna put gram tons in here. Same thing, I'm gonna add, assign a color code and so on to it. Okay, I'm just gonna say save. So because I have two gold value in this, in this example, so maybe I wanna add another column that will be my gold final value that I'm gonna use for all my calculations later on. So this is where you go new. And we've talked about this in the other webinar about calculated field. Um, so you just go in calculated field. I'm gonna call this column AU final, for example, okay? and I want my result to be in gram tons. Okay, two decimal places. There will be a, a color code, NCSS again, and I'm gonna go into the calculation. Okay, so the calculated fields, uh, you can have simple calculations, so just do a little uh, operations. As you may see, as you see down there, uh, you can ignore some allowed code, so maybe you don't want us to change it for their values, okay? So for example, when we said it was over 10,000, I just said replace it by 10,000. If I don't want this to happen, I'm just gonna select those codes and just put it in the selection bar in here, okay? You can also just decide to not evaluate at all, all the allowed codes, okay? So that's also possible. Or if you have empty values, uh, you may want to use zero as a value or not, depending on, on what you need to do. Okay, so for example, if you're receiving your assay results but you're missing a sample 
if you're doing your average composite, then you're missing that sample is going to use zero. Okay, um, so depending on what you want to do. Okay, so this window will not change much into the other tabs. Okay, so this is was just for simple calculation. If you're doing conditional calculation, you can just do a, a if function. So if if this happened, then this happened, else do this. So you can just build a little conditional calculation in here. Simple average, you could just decide to do uh, we, uh, an average of the two values, and that, that would be your result, your final result. Or the more, the most in interesting one, in, in I think, for result is the priority average. So for example, so we have gravimetric, and gravimetric were, are mostly done when the fire assay are over the limit, so are, they're not as precise. So what you may want to do is you'll take the AU grav and put it as priority one. It's going to prompt you for a multiplicator, okay, so a factor. Okay, so these are just the conversions between one, one unit to another. Okay, so in this case, it's already in Granton, and I want my result in Granton, so I'm just going to leave as one. So what it does, it says, okay, you look if there's a, if there's any value into this column, then take this column. If not, I'm going to put it in priority two. But in this case, I have PPB that I want to convert into gram tons. So I'm going to use a factor. Okay. So this is what happens. Okay. So it's going to look into this column. If there's a value, that's the value it's going to return to my calculated field. If not, it's going to look in priority two and take this value. Okay. If you had more than one in here, it's possible. Okay. It will do the average of the two, um, two as priority one or priority two and, and so on. So you have the choice between four priorities. And the last option here is the advanced calculation. So there's a lot of functions. You can write formulas and things if you want to be, um, want to use this into a more complex way, it's possible as well. For this example, I'm just going to use the priority average. Okay, so I'm just going to use this, and I'm going to evaluate all my codes. Okay, so I can do save, and close this, right? Um, so if I was going to go into my webinar uh, table now, I have my from to sample number description, AU AAS, AU grav, and my AU final. Okay, so that's how it goes. Okay, so so that's fine. Uh, but most of the time, people are doing also QAQC on their assays. Okay, so I'm just going to show you how to define your QAQC into the library. Because when you import your certificate, as long as you have a sample number, it's going to allocate those to the right uh, sample number. And so if, you, if this sample number is for a QAQC, it's going to go directly into your QAQC tables and so on. Okay, so uh, let's go into the library. So you have the allowed codes that we, we talked about, the asset title. Let's go to QAQC blank. Okay, so this is where you define the different blanks that you are using on this database. Okay, in this case, I have two different blanks. So I have decorative stones and marble, um, but you can add many, as much as you want, as many as you want, I mean. Uh, you can also decide to add a blank every, every 35 samples, every 40 samples, like one per batch or whatever, okay? So you just decide how often you want to have a message prompting you to put a blank QAQC, okay? If you leave it at zero or empty, it's never going to ask you and you'll have to enter them manually, okay? So just for the sake of this example, I'm just going to put like 35, every 35 samples, okay? So save. Whoops, I forgot to, uh, okay, 35 samples, sorry, save. Okay, close. So this, these are for blanks. Okay, yeah, let's go to duplicate and we'll come back to standards after that. Okay, so if you go to duplicates, so you can have different uh, duplicates. In this case, I have two different ones. So I have my normal duplicates and I have quarter splits. Uh, you can use one by default. And again, you can choose to put one every N samples, right? So, so you can do that as well. Okay. This is fairly 
um, easy. If we go to QAQC standard, it's a little bit more tricky. Okay, first of all, all your standards are linked to one table. Okay, so for example, now I'm in the table assay, I have these three standards defined. But if I go into my webinar, I have no standard defined. So I'll have to go and define those standards. Okay, so I'm just gonna create a new standard. And then if you have material coming from, uh, from labs or things for your standards, um, you'll receive like a little certificate that looks something like this, right? Uh, certificate of analysis, these are from Rock Labs, for example, and these are, this is just an example. Um, and if you go in here, it's going to give you all the information you need uh, to fill out this page. Okay, so in this particular example, uh, on this standard, I have 40 sets and the average was 0 0.607 ppm. Okay, so that's what I will enter. Okay, but then you have to be careful about the units. Okay, because if these are um, ppm, you'll have to make the conversion yourself. Okay, so, um, all right, so 40 sets. So if we go in here, so name, uh, what's the name of this standard? Sorry, I forgot to, to look at it. It's SE58, okay, SE58. Let's, let's do the SE58 standard. And then you can write an abbreviation if you want to call it something else for your name, for your internal information. And then you have to assign it to one specific element or one column that is in your table. So in this case, I'm going to use the AUAAS. You can create the same standard, but assign it to the a gravimetric one if you want to afterwards. Okay. Uh, the mean is 0 0.608, was it it? Um, just double checking, uh, 607. And the standard deviation was 0 0.019. Okay, so now I'm making a mistake, okay? Um, because this is 0 0.07, because I'm not in the right unit. So this column is in PPB, and my standards are in PPM. Okay, so I have to multiply by 1,000. Okay, so that's going to be 607. Uh, this is going to be 19, right? Yeah, 19. All right, so here we go. And here it's asked for the size. A lot of people are asking me, what is the size? Actually, you can find it in here. The size is the number sets that were used um, to calculate that mean and standard deviation. Okay, so this is what you have to enter in size. And their only reason why they ask for size is for statistical reasons. When you do your QAQC graphs, it's gonna it's gonna be used in your in in as for statistical reason reasons, right? Okay, so save. So now you have your first um, your first standard. Okay, so if I wanted to, I can add the same one. Okay. And um, okay, and just assign it to a U grav, and it's the same. Oops, but in this case, we are already in Gramton, so I'm just going to put six zero eight and point zero nineteen, and put forty in here. But again, I can ask the the the. the I can make the software ask you every n samples to add a new standard, for example. Okay, so so that's how you enter your um, standards. Okay, just don't forget these are linked to your tables and also to the elements. But the blanks and duplicates are not. Okay, just to let you know. Also. Uh, you may want to add your labs. So, for example, here I have already th three labs entered. Maybe, what, maybe I want to add this one. It's called a master lab. So I'm going to put master lab in here. So save. So I have a new lab entered in here. And that's not a problem. Okay, so if you want to do some compositing later on, you also have to define your zone. Okay. 
So in here I have uh, four different zones already entered. I can create a new zone. So let's call it, this is zone B, for example, okay? And if I know the attitude of my zone, so I know the direction and dip of my zone, uh, I can just write it down, okay? So in this case, let's say that my, I know that it's around 263 and minus 66, so that's the uh, attitude of my zone. And then you can choose what to do with missing intervals. Do you want values to be equal to zero, to, be, to have empty intervals giving you errors or is values of zero? Is this zone only assigned to one or to all the projects that I have in my database and so on? Okay, so you have to define those zones to be able to do uh, average composites later. Okay, so, so just make sure that you enter this correctly. Okay, because if you don't, the through thickness is going to return is not going to be uh, good. Okay, so save. All right, so now we're good. Okay, so it says you will have to recalculate average composites because they saw that I've done some modification into that tab. All right, so now, um, okay, so everything is set up into Geotic. So let's say that I'm logging into that, um, that table. Okay, so I'm just gonna use the webinar table in here, okay. Uh, I'm just gonna add new data, so I'm just gonna go here. Hmm, there's already data in there. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you how it works, so I'm just gonna delete everything from here. Um, I have to be in edit mode, so it works. Um, okay, I think I have to redo it. Okay, delete. Uh, yes, I'm going to delete everything. Okay, that's fine. I'm going to delete my QAQC as well. Okay, and just redo it with you. Okay, so, all right. So let's say I'm uh, in this brand new table. I want to add my sample. You just press the little plus. Let's say that we have sampling every one meter, but they can be all different, obviously. Uh, my first sample number is D0001. Okay, normally, in the normal process, you will be entering your sample number before receiving your certificate, okay? But in this example, I, I'm doing it at this moment, but normally this would be already done, okay? So, so you just enter your different things. As you see, it's gonna keep the same interval and it will just increase the sample number by one. So I can just go plus, 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 because they're all one meter, okay? And so on. So let's say that now I know I, I want to put a manual standard. Okay, so I'm going to go into and right click into the last entry and say add a standard QAQC. So the standards that we've entered before are now here. So depending on which one, I should have actually specified if, if it was for the uh, gravimetric or for the um, fire assay. But anyway, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so SE58. That's the one I just wanted to enter. So automatically it added the following number. Don't panic, I know it says from to and it's a standard, it doesn't really make sense to have a from to. Um, this value was only there to know in which sequence uh, the sample was taken. That's the only reason why it's there, it's not using any calculations other than this. Okay, so if I'm going here uh, and I press a little, whoops, I'm in the wrong window. Okay, I go in here. I can continue adding samples in here. I will have skipped the 23 because it's a standard. Um, let's say we go to 35. See, I've put it before that I wanted to have a prompt every 35 uh, samples to add a blank. So that's why I have this message. Okay, so do you want to add a blank? So you can choose to ignore this message or just say yes, and you choose between the two blanks that were entered into my database. So I can just double click on MRB uh, and same idea, you have a from to that is not used anywhere but you know at least when in the sequence it was taken. And then you can just continue adding data uh, like this, okay, so you, you just add more sample. Okay, maybe we want to add a duplicate because we don't have any duplicates yet. Um, let's say that we're doing a quarter split, okay, so, so we're doing a uh, quarter split, so it says it's a duplicate, and then it referenced to 
the previous sample. Okay, so that's why it says D0065. That was the previous sample, so it's going to be a duplicate or a quarter split in this case of that sample. Okay, and so on. So you can just, whoops, I always do this. Um, delete, yes, I want to be. See, it's, it becomes in dark blue to know in which which of the windows you are. Okay, so um, I'm just going to go to to, to to another one. Okay, so another blank because we're now at 70 and we said every 35 uh, samples. Okay, so I'm just going to say no because I don't want one here. And now we are at D0075. Okay, I'm just going to stop here because my certificate goes all the way to D0075. Okay. Uh, but then you can just add more if you, if you needed to, right? Okay, so here we go. So we have our sample into our database. We have a certificate to import. Okay, so let's say I just received that certificate. I made sure that all my allowed codes were entered and so on. Okay, so how do I import a certificate? So this is what I'm going to show you uh, quickly in here. Okay, so you would go directly into the library, no, not the library, sorry, into the import certificate. And then you can just say in which table these values are going to go. So in this case, it's in webinar. I'm going to go and fetch for this um, for this file. Okay, so these are in, in my case, are in Geotic, Demo Mine, uh, Certificate, Assay, and then I know I have one called Webinars. Open. So I'm going to open this. Um, okay, so the first time you enter a certificate for a lab, you'll have to make an importation profile. Okay, so you need to go and see where is my title line and where is my first data line? So if I open this, okay, so my title line is on line 13. So this is the name of my columns. And my first data is at 17. So that's what I'm going to write in here. Title line 13, first data line 17. And then I can do a load. So it's going to recognize these. Okay, sample number is already matched into sample number. Okay, when you see these kind of windows in Geotech, source is what comes with your Excel or CSV file. Destination is where it goes into Geotech. Okay, so here we go. So we have AUAAS. In which column do I want to ship this into Geotech? So if you double click on this, you say, okay, this is going to go into this column. This one is going to go into this column. Okay. So it's possible that you have a lot more than just two, okay? Uh, and then you can just save this importation profile, so test webinar or something, okay? And so you'll know for next time, and actually you can even say which cell of the, of the Excel has the certificate date. Uh, so in my case, it's on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and six on the other side, okay? So, so line six, column nine, it's going to recognize the certificate date automatically. And then I can assign a lab to this thing, okay? So now we're, in, we're ready to import, so we're just going to press import. Um, so it's going to go into the database. Okay, so I have one error. I'm just not going to save it, but you can save those as CSV files just to make sure that everything was important and so on. So it, you can just keep track of this. Uh, but if I go into the error, it says the sample 2750 graphimetric is smaller than 0 0.05. So probably what I'm guessing is this symbol there, this smaller than is not included into my allowed code. So I can just go and have a look at this. Okay, so if I go into the allowed code, smaller than 0 0.05, I have 0 0.005, 0 0.05, but here there's a space, so I'm guessing, yeah, so that's why um, it didn't import that value in here, okay? So I could just actually just, um, I'm just going to write detection limit again and just say smaller than five, uh, 0 0.05, sorry. And that's going to be 0 0.25. Yeah, safe. 
All right, close. We need to recalculate. Uh, so I could go ahead and re-import my, my certificate or, and you can just import the missing value. So I could re-import this automatically. Okay. We'll, we'll look at this next time on the next webinar. So if I go back into my assay table now, all my values have been uh, imported and then you have your AU final in here. It has been calculated. Okay, so, so this is pretty much how it goes. Um, in this case, it did, didn't really make sense. I should have created two color codes because now my color codes, because it's in PPB in here, um, everything's gonna be in pink because it's PPB. Uh, well, my results are not that great actually. So, so you have to be careful with this. So I think that's pretty much it for today. Um, so, so don't miss out the next uh, webinar that is also going to be on uh, assays and how to calculate uh, um, average composites, how to do QAQC graphs, how to re-import uh, assays and things like this. Okay, so um, don't miss out. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate. I'm going to be here to answer all your questions. Um, so, so 